Kyle. Kyle. Kyle, we're live what? right now. Oh, Kyle, come on, man. This guy, this guy's having a blade week. Look at this. Oh, wait, I switched it. How do you switch it back? There it is. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the comedic timing of that was actually better. <laughs> I screwed it up. <laughs> he, he spent a lot of time with us, too. Make sure to top one. I'll, I'll keep him. Leave I'll keep him. I'll keep him. I thought you were him. <laughs> no, we're not. Good evening, Carol Jess Shoppers. <laughs> um, we are understandably still loopy from this weekend because it was so great. We had such a good time. Everything went so smooth. Everybody who showed up was awesome. Everybody who supported us from afar was awesome. We sold a lot of really great stories. We gave a lot of really great books away. Um, we just had all in all a really great time. And we still have some books to give away, too. That is true. Uh, if you stop in the shop in the next week or so, we have plenty of uh, the main Marvel and DC books at the front of the counter. Feel free to grab some free comic books uh, after you complete your new comic or old comic purchases. Right? Exactly. Uh, speaking of old comic purchases, coming up on May 18th is uh, Late Night Comics. This month in in. Sticking with the momentum of Free Comic Book Day and how jacked up we were. It's a good one, too. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, all Marvel dollar books. Every dollar book in the store is going to be, well, every dollar book on the table is going to be Marvel, as promised by John Dewey. So that's going to be a great late night comics. Pretty positive we're going to do half-off back issues for that, too. Uh, maybe, I'm, I'm, maybe, depending on what John says put up on the wall. I'm 75% positive. Yeah. There's the possibility of yes. half-off back issues. Um, but yeah, so that's coming up. That's exciting. We're going to keep doing those. We love them. Uh, the 17th, Andrew's birthday. Oh, yeah. Please join us on the 17th, uh, Wednesday at 7, 30, 8 o'clock-ish at the Grog Shop. Uh, Lenora hosts a, uh, what's it called? Midnight, Midnight, movie Midnight Rental. Midnight like VHS. Like... It's a mystery horror movie with, like, fun intermissions and event stuff but it's andrew's birthday more importantly the day before free comic book day so now we're going to celebrate it two weeks after <laughs> uh, i'm going to co-host with lenora uh which is really great i'm really excited yeah. about that I'm do you have any that. hosting experience <laughs> <laughs> i'll look into it and get back to you on paper with that one uh but i'm really excited and andrew's really excited and laura's really excited john's really excited he's going to close the store by himself that wednesday which is like funny to think about uh, but yeah, so that's Wednesday the 17th, and Thursday the 18th is Late Night Comics. Stuff's happening. Yes. Uh, speaking of stuff happening, first appearances. First appearance. Appearance. <laughs> um, Batman Incorporated, number eight, is the first cover appearance of Joker Incorporated, and the first official appearance of the Tap Dance King. Tap Dance. It's just the Tap Dance Man. Tap Dance Man. Thank you. Thank you. Damn, even with those teeth in. <laughs> uh, Tap Dance Man. So we'll get to that one on the table, but... One you can't miss, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and with any purchase you make this week, we have a cool freebie. Um, Penguin and Marvel supplied us with uh, Marty Mighty Marvel Backlist. I don't have those figures for you. It's fair. <laughs> um, it is a cool primer of essential Marvel reads that are apparently in print, though there's been some rumblings on the internet that they're not. But if you see anything in here when we hand it to you that you're very interested in, we'd be happy to try and order it for you. If we don't have it already. If we don't have it already, which we should, because we're awesome. Uh, we're going to swing around this side of the table to show you the two feet by three foot foam core prints of this year's free comic book day poster. We use these during the event for photo ops and display, but now we're selling them for 50 bucks. They're super awesome, super sturdy. Um, look great in your house. What? I like that. Is it because I did my lip bite? See? Sturdy. Sounded sturdy. Uh, but yeah, we got a bunch of those for 50 bucks, and we even have a few from <gasps> last year, which look awesome. Uh, if you prefer a uh, symbiote Spider-Man. Ah, oh, Blade again. Uh, um, Marvel Select put out a new awesome figure that Kyle lingered on here earlier today, tonight. Uh, Marvel Select's Blade with plenty of accessories. Right? Many knives. Many knives. knives. And the, uh, kn the one knife, the main knife, Folds out into a knife boomerang, which, if you're familiar with Blade, classic, right? Yes. It's pretty cool. Uh, other action figure new accessory uh, accoutrement this week is Boba Fett's starship in three and three quarters scale for those Star Wars figures. It comes with 
uh, Boba Fett from the Book of Boba Fett in his black cloak and with his sweet um, Tuscan Raider weapon. It's called, called? A, it's called a gaffy stick. A gaffy stick. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, it does not come with Fennec Shan, but she's there for scale. Yeah. Gender, gender scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and since we're on this side of the cable, table, we'll start with kid stuff. We got a new one shot for Godzilla Rivals. Um, By Lanty versus Destroya. God, thank you so much for being here for that one. Um, and then we got a new Looney Tunes. That's number 272. Batman Scooby Doo Mysteries is on number 8 of 12. Uh, Mark Wade's Jonah the, and the um, Unpossible Monsters. Chris Sammies. Oh. Why did I get that wrong? Because I think about Wade Daredevil. Yeah. Okay. Chris Samney's Jonah and the Unpossible Monsters has a new volume. And then we've got a collection of Binky the Space Cat uh, for 45 bucks. Uh, it's top secret collection. It contains five books. Yes. Which are amazing, apparently. And they're awesome. And based on a new show property that I never really? knew about. Yeah, it says oh, right there. Good for them. It says somewhere on there. Good. Oh, yeah. Now a popular TV series. Oh, Binky's awesome. Hardcover, uh, Daughters of Snow and Cinder. It's like a modern mythology book uh, about a girl and her dog companion. We've got a new dynamite, uh, new number two Disney villain, Scar, is on number two. Uh, Frank Rosetta's Death Dealer is on number, so small, 12. Um, from Frank Miller Presents, the Ancient Enemies series has a couple one-shots coming out featuring the characters from that universe. So this one's Wraith and Son. And then... Our, like, natural pick of the decade, I guess, for the entire store. The Nasty has a new issue with number two, which is spectacular. And then issue number one is reprinted at the same time, which is equally spectacular, but reprinted. We talk about, like, having hooks for comics and, like, the the variations. You've got the fish hook. This has the meat hook at the end of issue two that is superb. It, will, it makes you want to read issue three, like, right now. I would basically guarantee you're going to read issue three. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's capital G. So good. Uh, a weird number one from American Mythology. We've got, what? Sorry, not good. Oh, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, that's okay. Cartoon puppet horror theater. It is exactly what it sounds like. And there are puppets reenacting uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, right there on the cover. With suggested nudity. This is odd. Uh, I skipped one from Humanoids. You got a new Inkle hardcover, The Dying Star. And then next to the weird puppet book, we've got King Kong, The Great War. A U2, uh, U-boat uh, lands on Skull Island and dinosaurs attack. So during World War II? Yes. Okay, cool. Heck yeah. Yeah. Uh, two big, awesome number ones on this side of the table, which is kind of why we started over here. Ghost Lore is our sleeper staff pick of the week. None of us knew that this book was going to be any good. And it is. Uh, Did I ordered, you? I ordered it. He, yeah, yeah, he was he was kind of he was excited yeah, for it. And smart, yeah. <laughs> so Ben Ben knew it was going to be good, and it was good. I this was completely off my radar, and I've already added it to my pile. Yeah, Cullen Bunn strikes again. It's a great horror story about a basically estranged father and daughter. He's a minister, not the greatest, uh, and they end up in a horrific situation that allows them to be more in touch with the veil between worlds. Yes. Um, there is a little less information than that in the book, but that's where it's going. It's got a good X-Files vibe. It's got this good family, like, this dysfunction to it. It's a little bleak, but the artwork's fantastic. Uh, the story looks like it's going to end up being just great. It's going to mix up a lot of ghost stories um, with, like, American folklore, and they, they're apparently, from what I read for advanced solicits, they're going to travel across the country. But it's a 12-issue miniseries. It looks like it's just going to be a hit. Like an absolute hit. So it's good. Thank you, Boom. Uh, from Mad Cave, next to it, there's a new book called Monomyth, which is much more magical, much more uh, witch and wizard. Uh, random strangers are chosen from across the world from a very Merlin-esque out-of-time wizard, and they are sucked into a fantasy realm, and they are given wands and have no idea what to do with them, and they have to just live in the world of magic now, and they're very normal people. So that's pretty exciting, and there's some good, like, there's a good hook at the end. We'll call it fish hook at the end of it. Um, so, but the artwork's phenomenal too, with the creatures and the magic and the whatnot. Uh, big old hardcover of Avatar: High Ground. So, a couple of mini series they just uh, did through Dark Horse for Avatar: The Blue People one, not the Airbender one. Uh, from Dark Horse, you got an original graphic novel for Final Girls. Uh, Dragon Age has a new issue for the missing. I think it might be the last issue of this mini series. 
Uh, you've got Dark Horse's Murder Incorporated, Jagger Rose. That's number one, but it's following up on other miniseries. Yes, In- other Murder Incorporated by Brian Michael Bendis. Essentially, crime families have failed in keeping America stable, surprise, surprise, and now mayhem. Yes, cool. Uh, Scott Snyder finishes up a miniseries for Dark Horse called Clear, which we've all been really into, even though some of us couldn't read issue two. But that's issue three, so that's the last one. And then we're on to DC, right? Yes. Col- oh, what's so, yeah. Uh, so collected, we've got the Gotham Academy. It's the entire shebang, uh, with one cool exception. And in fact, I'm going to jump right up here real quick because this is the Gotham Academy Maps of Mystery featuring Batman. So this has all the Gotham Academy like mini, like the full series in one big honking collection. This has all the one-shots that were backups in the Batman books, in the Bell Rev one-shot, and all sorts of other stuff collected for the first time here. So if you get both, you get the entire Gotham Academy like story all at once. It's cool they put them out the same week. Yes. Finally, good marketing. Hey, Amazing. DC. Yeah. Uh, Wonder Woman Paradise Lost. Uh, Phil Jimenez uh, does this book, and it's the Wonder Woman collection, it's and it's really good. 2023 edition. Yes. Uh, above that, Superman, Son of Kal El, uh, John's like final run on his like fifteen issue series that's collected here in hardcover. Uh, the new uh, champion of Shazam, uh, Doc Shaner's like awesome artwork of Mary Marvel becoming the new Shazam, um, and then Wildcats on issue seven. Oh, it's the death of Grifter. No. Not really. But uh, so we've got the regular cover there. We've got the very cool 1 in 25 variant for that one on there. I have no idea who that character is, and that 1 in 25 is awesome. It's yeah, great. I love this cover. Yeah. Uh, Batman Gotham, uh, The Adventures Continue, Season 3 on issue number 5. Looks like we got some Suicide Squad action there. Just a little bit. Uh, Joker Incorporated. Oh, wait. No, Batman Incorporated. Number 8. Uh, we've got the regular cover, and then nope, that's, it. that's the only cover. And then Harley screws up the DCU. We've got issue number three for that with its action number one homage. Uh, Danger Streets on number six. All the characters from the first issue specials have now all been introduced in this issue here. And it you can tell the story is going to move forward from there. And it still looks so yummy. I know. It's still great. And yes, the cereal it is yummy. With Omega-3 now. I was just yes. going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, above that, again, the Gotham Academy Maps of Mystery. So if you read any of that stuff and you want collected, a nice $5, $6 book way to do it. Um, Spirit World, number one, it's the We Are Legends. Uh, they're going to be doing a number of them. Uh, this one introduces Xanth. Uh, she can bounce between, like, worlds uh, like the spirit world and the regular world currently cassandra came back girl is trapped in the spirit world and she teams up with john constantine to track her down and bring her back nice. uh star girl lost children's on issue number six i'm sad because that book is good um six of six sandman universe nightmare country glass house on number two uh, Corinthians still with his creepy eyes because you get to see them on the cover uh, of uh, oh, oh, yeah, it's awesome. Come on. I know, I it's great. I didn't notice until now. Uh, above that, a New White Knight presents uh, Generation Joker. Joker has kids, and we get to follow them and see their antics throughout here. Uh, uh, with art by Mirka and Dolphin. Yes. So Rothwell will want this one. Uh, we've got the 1 in 25 variant for that there. And we ordered enough to get the black and white version of the 1 in 50 variant nice. on that one. And then... More reasonable prices on those ratio variants. I know, crazy. Thank you, But You're welcome. there is no spiffy, spiffy oof, shiny. Oof. Not even with Green Lantern starts up again. Uh, we've got Hal Jordan back in action. Uh, and he's back at Coast City. He wants to be a test pilot again. Hooks up with Carol Ferris. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't. That's what's awesome about the cover B variant, because as he's knocking, she's locking the door. Oh, he's in the, power. He's in the rain know. too. So I know, right? So we've got it's the a Green Lantern. We've Don't got the regular five. cover. We've got the regular cover for that. It's got a really cool John uh, Stewart backup story in it as well. Uh, we've got the cover B variant. We've got the Ivan Rice variant. We've got the Sinestro Perillo variant. We have a one in twenty five variant. We have a one in fifty variant. And, but not, uh, one in 100, not shiny or spiffy, 
variant. Still pretty cool. There. I will say this because I like the book more than John Shear. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed this return to Green Lantern because I started reading comics, or at least Green Lantern, with Jeff John's run of Green Lantern. And that book, that book previously had attitude. And I have not seen that attitude in Green Lantern 6 since until now. I like a good Green Lantern with chutzpah. Some Howard Jordan with some confidence. He's coming back to do what he wants to do. Um, I like the start of this book a lot. I liked it a lot. And the backup story is great. Backup story is great. Backup story is awesome. But now we're on to Marvel, right? Yay. With Extreme Veniverse. With Extreme Veniverse. Top of the table this week. Where are we going? Blade Agility. That's yeah, right. <laughs> Suck it. Um, <laughs> Suck heads. Uh, Extreme Veniverse number one starts this week. It's a five-issue miniseries. Um, it is a pure trip through the multiverse with the symbiote, with the Venom symbiote specifically. Um, so you've got a story in here where... Peter Parker, in getting rid of the symbiote in those first appearances, actually dies. Specifically, his brain turns to mush, yes. which is awesome. Uh, you've got a story in here dealing with the recent Venom multiverse stuff uh, with Anne and, and Dylan. And, oh, Dylan. Yes, yeah. thank you. And then uh, there's a new character in here, unnamed as of yet, uh, but the first time Venom appears as a samurai, uh, which is, as you can imagine, awesome. Um, so there's a sword involved. <laughs> but Extreme Veniverse, uh, definitely a good pick. Uh, especially if you're in for the Summer of Symbios. Yes. Um, next to that, we've got the... Is that Stegman? No, this is Stegman. Oh. Pinogian? I made that mm -hmm. up. Uh, this is cover B. Yes. Okay, thank you. This, cover B. This is the Momoko variant. Love it. This yeah. is the Stegman variant. And then we have the 1 in 25 variant. Thank you, John Chair. Yes. Uh, below that, we've got Captain Marvel still fighting the brood with number 49. But it's the finale. Oh, this is the last part? Yep. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That explains the awesome cover B for that uh, one. It's so good. It's a great cover. We were looking at that on FFC, remember? Yep. Oh, yeah. And then a uh, big issue for Amazing Spider-Man this week. We're on number 25. You're, you're chomping. I am. So Spider-Man number one started off with, like, Spidey in a field, big explosion, goes one year later, Spidey's life's in a mess. You find out everything that happened in this issue. Like, what made it, like, why his life is a mess right now. It's great. Mess revealed. It's mess revealed, and it does it perfectly. Like, they explain it, they explain everything to your best satisfaction. It's fantastic. Yeah, I it's a agree. great 25th issue. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot recommend it enough. I feel like there's a, a big also reveal for people who are reading Black, uh, Mary Jane and Black Cat. Yes. Like, you want to you wanna pick this up because you want to know What's the background. Yeah, exactly. the connection's great. Yeah, and like I hadn't been reading Mary Jane Black Cat, and it was just great to know that that connection was there. Mm -hmm. Yes. But we got variant covers for this one. A couple uh, Disney 100th anniversary, the new Avengers variant, uh, homage to the disassembled right there. And then a 1 in 25, it's called a jackpot cover, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. And ooh, a 1 in 50. That's mm -mm. Uh, 1 in 100. Oh, I'm sorry. That's 1 in 100. I'm upside down. So <laughs> those numbers are so similar. Gwen Stacy. Uh, that's John Romita Jr. Uh, doing Gwen Stacy and an homage to Amazing Fantasy 15. Yes. Um, next row down. More Gwen. More Gwen. Uh, Spider Gwen Shadow Clones is on issue number three. We had some great last minute pre orders, so we don't have any cover A's, but this will be your Greg Land uh, character variant and then the Gonzalez cover variant for that one. Next to it, a row of Ghost Rider. Nope. Oh, okay. All good. A row of Ghost Rider. We're on number 14. Surprisingly, the only thing I have not read yet this week. Oh, you me. didn't? I did not. Shocker. I read a lot of other stuff. Not oh. this one. But I'm stoked to find out they're still dealing with the Inferno Core and all that stuff. Uh, cover, the next cover is a waste of paper. <laughs> it's the, I, I don't even know this dude. It, it looks like a calendar. It's a Tiger Division guy. It looks like a man, It does look like a calendar. calendar. It does. Tiger Division guy on the AAPI variant. And then you got a Spider-Verse variant for Ghost Rider, which makes up for how lame the other one is, because it's awesome. Yep. Okay. <laughs> We're all in agreement. <laughs> I'm not the only one with that opinion. I just want that out there. <laughs> Cosmic Ghost Rider uh, is on issue number three of their current miniseries, so you got some verse Valkyrie action, and we got a cover B for that one, which is rad. Yes. Uh, down here, Rogue and Gambit are also on issue number three with a beautiful cover A. We got a cover B, and then the De Decal variant, which might be our favorite cover of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, that is just well conceived, especially with this. That's how you treat a man in the rain. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another number one, <laughs> another new miniseries from Marvel this week. You got Silk number one. 
Um, by Emily Kim. It's Silk Through the Ages. So this one deals with kind of a noir version of Silk. She's in the 20s. Um, I don't know how she gets to the next version of her, but eventually we're going to have Pirate Silk, which seems rad. Right. Uh, we got some variants for that one. Derek Chu. Derek Chu did one. Peach Momoko did one. And we'll call it the character variant. Yep. We'll call it the character cool. variant because it's similar to the Rogue one. Yes. Wolverine is on number 33. And this is a doozy, too, with this verse B stuff, oh, if you're following it's, it. It's oh, yeah. lots, of, lots of beasts, lots of wolvies. Um, cover B. Cover B and the Spider-Verse variant, in case you he didn't have enough claws. One more. And then we got a 1 in 25. Look at all those beasts. Talk about beasts, yeah. Uh, Kyle's new favorite miniseries of the Marvel side, I Am Iron Man. Thank you. This will be your cover A, which is rad. And then there's so many good covers. There's so many good swords. Mojo's and this will be your cover B. Mojo's in this issue. Uh, well, that's not a selling point. <laughs> um, Miracle Man, the Silver Age comes back. We are on issue number five with this one. That'll be your cover B, and that'll be your cover C. I'm sorry, I don't have Raph here to oversell Miracle Man. <laughs> uh, Daredevil's on number 11. We got an Iron Fist backup story in this issue. This will be your Derek Chu variant. Dex, yep. Nailed it. I knew that. And then with Electra. And then. Now's your cue, John Shear. Yes. yes hey, ninja variant. ninja variant. Look at that star. I did not come into this one prepared. <laughs> a whole row of Iron Man. We'll do the epic collections in a minute. Yep. Invincible Iron Man takes place during the time of West Coast Avengers. We're on number six with this one. We got a Spider Verse variant, which is kind of Iron Hardy. Uh, the Hall of Armor variant, we got one of. And the 80s variant. Because yeah. look at that mustache. <laughs> and shoulders. One, yeah, there's shoulder pads in this book for sure. And one last one. Rose Besh did a virgin cover. It's a 1 in 50 variant. And it's amazing and well-priced because eBay was all over the place. Yes. Um, still new on the Marvel comic side of things. X-Men Red, number 11. Um, Storm really hands it to Professor X in this one. We got a Spider-Verse variant for that one. And then a 1 in 25 which is beautifully yes, rendered. All, all three of those. Two new Star Wars books, number 34 for Darth Vader. I know, number 33 came out last week. We, we know. And then uh, Star Wars High Republic, number nine. On the collected side of Marvel, we got two epic collections, Captain America Fighting Chance and X-Men Second Genesis. Below that, we've got uh, the most recent Alien miniseries wrapping up their hardcover, or I'm sorry, their paperback, so it's one through six. Uh, name more the Submariner Conquered Shores of the entire miniseries, and then reprints. Uh, Venom Lethal Protector is reprinting number one. Uh, Avengers Beyond, um, yep. yep. Avengers Beyond's reprinting number one. Also, Invincible Iron Man's reprinting number four, and then reprint of the week. Reprint of the week. It's Jeff. Uh, we sold out of it's Jeff instantly twice. Uh, we love Jeff. The Sharks, we love all the cuteness of Jeff the Shark, and they reprinted it, and we ordered a ton of them. Jeff and I love that cover. That cover's awesome. Beautiful. Jeff. Jeff. That's right. Put Jeff. Um, and then a little bit of image, and I'm going to let you guys get on with your evening. Uh, Saga's back, number 64. Uh, Kyle and I checked in the small press stuff earlier today, and we had a moment of silence of work stoppage to read the new Saga issue, mm -hmm. which doesn't get to happen mm -hmm. every Tuesday. Nope. So we're stoked. Um, we got a new Spawn issue this week. This will be your cover A. Mm -hmm. Yep, this will be your cover A. And then we got cover B, which is super creepy and bloody. Ooh, is it Cygor? I think it's Cygor. I think it's Cygor. This looks like, a, looks like a gorilla nose. And then, much to the chagrin of the entire staff, Junkyard Joe is finishing up its current miniseries with number six. It's a beautiful, perfect ending to a miniseries, and there is promise to more for the unnamed universe of Jeff Johns through Image. Very stoked about it. If he decided to not do any more unnamed and just do Junkyard Joe, I would be perfectly fine with it. I'm with it you. is you don't need to read Geiger before this. You don't need to read anything after this. You could just read Junkyard Joe and enjoy it, and it's wonderful. And it props to Gary Frank too because that artwork kills it. Yes, it kills it. Uh, Jeff Lemire and the Ten Thousand Black Feathers miniseries that goes along with the Bone Orchard Mythos is in hardcover. So if you're collecting the collections for those, there's your must-have. Below that, we got Monarch on number four, Black Cloak on number five, Noctera on number 14, and then one big new number one from Image This Week called Something Epic, which is about imagination. And it's a little over-explained. It's a little too much explanation, a little too less story, 
but it's beautiful in its explanation. It's beautiful with its artwork. I do not have any idea where it is going story-wise. Uh, but it is, it is about being too smart for your own good and experiencing the world in a different way. Yep. Right? The one thing that does peeve me about it is that the last page of the book is the back cover. That, Bold was, choice. that was weird. Bold choice. Uh, one extra cover for that one. It is a Terminator homage. It has nothing to do with what's happening in the book, but thank gosh for movie homage covers. Right. Um, that's our new comic table. Yeah. Right? That is our new um, comic table. We're excited to have a nice easy one to ease into a uh, new week of comics after free comic book day, but we're all well rested. Uh, you will notice that Andrea is not here tonight, so I will say at the end of this video that she's sick. She's feeling under the weather. She's got a fever. I was talking to her today. She's alive, but send her your well wishes. Hope she gets better soon, and uh, we'll hopefully see her later this week and into the weekend. Right? Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you for your new comics tomorrow. And thanks for a great free conference.